Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today, I want to talk about some more advanced applications of masking and in particular using what I call a luminance mask. So we'll cover how we can use that to create a split color tone effect uh, and also cover some ways that we can use masks to isolate color in a picture in the situation where we want to manipulate one color or ignore that one color for whatever manipulation we want to do. So let's get to it. So for this first example, I want to show how you can use a luminance mask to do what's called a split tone color effect. And what that essentially means is the, the image is going to be composed of two different colors, but distributed across uh, the luminance spectrum. So for this example, I have an image of a flower it's a fairly blue flower, but we'll change that in a little bit. So the first step is I want to duplicate the background image. And then now I'm going to add my mask layer from image. And right now the only image in my workspace is the image that I'm working on. So I'm going to choose that one. And what that does is now it creates a mask from the image I'm using. And when you look at it, really what it's done is created a mask based on the luminance of the image. So the dark parts are going to mask out more than the light parts. So then the final mask result is the lighter parts of the image. So now we can see that it's not really masking very well because this is a very gray image and it doesn't have a lot of dynamic range. So let's bring up the histogram and take a look at that. And you can see all the data is on the left side, meaning all the pixels are really um, dark. So the way we can spread this out is by going to adjust brightness contrast and histogram equalize. And now we can see, although it created some gaps, it has definitely stretched the luminance across the spectrum. So now if we look at the resulting mask, we can see there's a lot more detail in where the light areas are of the image versus the dark. So now that we've isolated the light parts from the dark parts, we can take the light part image and change the color by using hue saturation colorize. Maybe choose like an orange since it's a contrast to blue and then max out the saturation. And there we go. So now we have this nice split tone image that's a mixture of the blue and the orange. And it's sort of like a neat and unique effect. And it's done very easily with this luminance mask approach. If we wanted to give it a little bit more kick, we can increase the contrast just to make it stand out a little bit more. And for that, I'm just doing a copy merge so I'm not affecting my layer groups and I'm using levels. So for the next example, let's consider a situation where you have a particular color that you want to isolate and do some work on. Now in this case, I have a picture of a boy wearing a mask and let's say hypothetically, I wanna focus on changing or modifying the color of the mask or doing any kind of effect on the mask, but trying to isolate it based on its color. A pretty standard way is to use selections in this case. Maybe if you have the magic wand with the perfect level of settings and clicking on the right place, you could grab it um, or get a pretty good selection and then modify it manually. Uh, for some images, this will work all right. For others, it'll be much more difficult. So the alternative would be to use masks. And one way, I'll explain two ways, but one way that you can create a mask that's color isolated is by going to image, split channel, and then choosing one of those split methods, looking at the different images and seeing which one creates this sep the best separation between the object you want to identify and the rest of the image. So in my case here, it seems like the magenta split channel provides the best isolation for the mask from the rest of the image. So then what I can do is go back to my original image, duplicate, and then create a mask layer from image and now look for the magenta image that was created. And if we look at the resulting um, mask effect, we can see that the boy's mask, the green teal colored mask is pretty well isolated. It's not perfect, but it does pretty good just to begin with. 
So the way that we enhance that isolation is by adjusting the contrast of the mask layer. So in this case, the mask is white, so we want to try to make as much of the rest of the pixels of the image darker to create that separation. So you can see I'm using levels to darken essentially the rest of the image and now have that mask isolated. The mask is not perfect. There's still some parts of the mask that you can see are showing through, but because of the way the natural flow of luminance here, that even as we adjust it, it'll still blend nicely into the image rather than a harsh line created by a selection. So we don't want to apply our effect on the whole layer group, but just the layer that's being masked out. So in this case here, I'm going to show how we can just increase the saturation of the mask alone with minimal impact to the rest of the image. There is still some impact to the boy's face, for example, but it's much less by comparison to the mask and nominally you wouldn't really blow up the saturation like this this is just for example so that's the method of using the split channel to isolate a color another method that we can use to achieve the same effect uh, but purely using luminance masking is to first duplicate and then create a new raster layer and what we want to do is sample somewhere on the image the color we want to use as a reference. So somewhere in the middle of the mask, not too bright, not too dark. Set that as one of your colors and then fill using the bucket tool that whole new layer that you created. Now if we change the blend layer to difference, what that is essentially doing is subtract, subtracting all the color from the new raster layer you created from the layer below it. So when you mathematically think about that, what that is happening is saying the closer the color is to the raster layer, the darker it's going to be. And so you can kind of see, although the image is colored, that the mask on the boy's face is darker than most of the other parts of the image. Now, this isn't foolproof and is highly dependent on how many different, how similar colors are all over the image. But in this case, because the blue was mostly separate from the boy's face, it kind of works. So then at this stage, we want to merge down. And then from here, what we need to do, just like in every other case of trying to use masks, we need to create a new image instance so we can copy merge and paste into open space. And now we have a new image called image two. So when we go back to our original, delete uh, the, the layer that helped us generate our mask, duplicate the original, and then now do mask from image, but select our new image two that we created. And you can see now that luminance mask is applied in the same way that we did the split channel. However, in this case, it's backward. So we can select the mask layer, do negative image. And now it's a little bit more like what we saw with the split channel. This method is more foolproof than the split channel because you could have any color rather than relying on the randomness of whether one of the channels works really well. But the same applies where if we want to improve the isolation of the color, we have to use um, some contrast tools on the mask layer to help with that isolation. So in the same way, we need to darken most of the rest of the image so that we can isolate just the mask. So now we can see in the mask layer, the rest of the image is dark and the mask is fairly white. But even in the areas where it's not perfect, the transition is very natural. So when we apply, apply our effect, it won't stand out as if the mask was isolated. It'll just enhance or apply the effect that we want, primarily isolated to the region that we allowed through the mask. So although this mask came out slightly different, the effect is very similar to the split channel one. And that's it. So in summary, we did the split tone effect and that required you creating a luminance mask from the original image, applying a histogram stretch on the mask to get the full uh, dynamic range of the lightness to darkness. And then we just colorized one of the layers to create that 
dual color effect. For the color isolation, the first approach used the split channel so that we could take one of those channels and use it as a mask for isolating color and then adjusting the mask with contrast to get the level of isolation that we wanted. And the other color isolation effect was to create a fill color layer based off of a reference from the original image using a difference blend layer to create the luminance delta that we needed. Um, copying that out as a reference image and then using that reference image as the luminance mask for that image. It seems like a lot of steps, but once you kind of understand the concept, um, you can apply it without even thinking and it'll just, what I like most about this approach is that it allows for the regions of isolation to be much more naturally blended with the layers underneath, especially if you're trying to do effects like saturation or whatnot, whereas selections, although they can um, have a lot of detail to them, um, don't blend well at the edges. They usually have harshness to them with the only variance in that being feathering, which is still a constant around uh, the, the shape, whereas masking is much more organic. So I hope that was helpful. I hope you learned a lot about masking or at least some other ways that it can be used and that it can inspire you to find even more creative ways to use masking. But anyway, um, if you have any questions or suggestions for content, feel free to leave a comment. As always, you can subscribe to the channel if you want to get updates on new stuff that I post. And eventually, a blog post will be created for this tutorial so you can see it step by step and go at your own pace. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.